Hi, John here. In this video, we are going to look at a check valve. Specifically, we're going to look at a swing check valve. And I'm going to explain to you how it works, and we're going to look at all the main components. A check valve is a valve that allows flow in only one direction. Check valves are also called clack valves, or non return valves, or one way valves. There are different types of check valves, such as swing, tilting disc, piston butterfly and stop valves. But one of the most common and one of the simplest in design is the swing check valve that we're about to have a look at now. So let's take a cross section so we can see the internal components. Swing check valves can come in a straight body or wide body design. The one we're looking at now is a straight body design. We can see some of the components have been labelled such as a gasket, seat, disc, body and bonnet. The bonnet is designed to allow easy access to the internals of the valve. The internals of the valve are collectively known as the trim. We can see we have a bolt on the top in the centre. This is for perhaps mounting a pressure gauge or bleeding the valve. And we have two lifting eye bolts on the right and left. We also have a series of bolts around the top for securing the bonnet onto the valve body with a gasket placed for sealing. The gasket is made of a softer material than the bonnet and the body and the gasket is squeezed between the body and bonnet in order to get an effective seal. If we zoom out we can take a look at the seat and the disc. The seat is actually this area here. It is where the disc locates onto the body. Where the disc presses against the seat is the sealing area. And this effectively separates the inlet side of the valve from the discharge side. The disc itself is a round metal plate which swings back and forth and is connected to a hinge pin. The hinge pin is located here and a split pin is secured at either end to stop the hinge pin dislocating. The body of the valve forms the main pressure boundary within the valve and at the end of the valve we have two flanges which we can connect to piping using either bolts or perhaps we may also weld the flanges to the connecting piping. On the underside of the valve we have two metal feet and these feet will be used for when the valve is installed directly on the floor or a flat surface. Gaskets are used at either end of the valve flanges and these gaskets are used to seal the valve to the piping and reduce the likelihood of leakage. Let's now see how the valve works. We can see now that the disc is pressed against the seat. Unless the fluid pressure on the inlet side increases and overcomes the weight of the disc and the pressure on the outlet side, the disc will remain seated and the valve will remain closed. The exact point at which flow begins to occur is known as the cracking pressure and we'll try to simulate that now. So the cracking pressure has already been achieved. The disc is now opening and flow is passing through the valve. We'll open the disc all the way as far as we can disc is now fully open. If we zoom out, we can actually simulate it this time, but from a full section view. Disc is fully open and flow can pass into the main body of the valve and then through to the outlet side. However, let's now simulate if flow comes from the opposite direction. If the outlet pressure exceeds the inlet pressure, the check valve will close and the disc will be pressed against the seat. That's what we're seeing now. The pressure at which there is no indication of flow is known as the ceiling pressure or seating pressure. Let's now take another cross section so we can see how that works from the side. 
In fact, we can actually just remove the body and we can see we simulate the valve opening and then closing again. Sometimes you'll notice that the seat is slightly tilted. The reason that we tilt the seat is because it enables us to seat the disc more easily and the valve also seats better at higher pressures. This type of valve is not well suited for systems where there are many pressure fluctuations. The reason it's not well suited for pressure fluctuations is simply because when the valve opens and closes rapidly, you may quickly damage the disc or the seat. If the disc or the seat is damaged, then the valve will no longer seal correctly. If the valve is not sealing correctly, we have a situation which is called passing, which effectively means that fluid will leak past the disc from the outlet side to the inlet side. When the swing check valve is fully open, the pressure drop across the valve from the inlet side to the outlet side is very low. This makes them very well suited for high flow, low velocity applications. Not only is the pressure drop across the valve very low, but turbulence as the flow passes through the valve is also very low, and this is a significant advantage. In addition to that, it's also possible to change the seat rings and the disc in order that a leaking or passing valve can be repaired without needing to remove the entire valve itself. In the next lesson, we're going to look at a different style of check valve known as the lift check valve.